Uh, okay, hi everyone. Uh, thank you for letting me have this opportunity to present the project of mine. Uh, basically, it's a project about music, most specifically about music improvisation, and in particular, but not really in particular, in the musical genre of jazz. So, uh, uh, if you want to follow along or maybe check out some of the links, I will share the uh, URL for the slides. So, well, we can begin now. So this is a shiny app for jazz improvisation. It was created by me and with the help also of a friend who is learning some, a little bit about real design. So first, a little introduction. I am a mathematics undergrad student from Latin America, in particular from Peru. Uh, I have dabbled a little bit in the area of front end. So I am uh, a little bit familiar with uh, technologies like HTML and CSS and JavaScript. But I am also a shiny enthusiast. So I, I wanted to create an app using Shiny where I could use a lot of these knowledge. And in particular, Perhaps what motivated this the most is the following reason. That I consider myself a paid jazz music learner, jazz improvisation from many teachers, but I, I didn't really uh, quite get the, the techniques and such. So I, I can really do a, a good enough musical sort. So in order to fix this, is why I created this app. Uh, but first, there was a, a new hope, as I say, and that came in the form of this other application. I didn't create it. This is uh, from another person. This is called Melotier. And I wanted to show you the trailer where they explain a little bit what it does. Because my, my app is basically uh, almost a superset of this one. So it shares many of the same capabilities. Uh, so let me play this video. Uh, starting only uh, only seventy seconds of it, so that you get a sense of uh, what my app is trying to do. Let's see, it's lagging a little bit. I, I don't have good connection right now, but let's give it a try. Okay, it's not loading. Um, let's see. So let me share. Uh, maybe now it is. Okay. Uh, first, watch out for the sound. Whether maybe it's too loud. So I, I will play it now, and perhaps you can regulate your sound so it doesn't blow at your ears. So starting now. You are a beginner or a virtuoso. This app will change your life. It's allowing you to visualize, hear, and sing the melodic. Like modes associated with the chords of. A song to teach your ear and voice. And as you can see, each column represents some, well, all of the notes, but the ones that have been colored, uh, and in this case also number, uh, these are the notes that in some sense then sound good uh, when they are played underlying this specific chord that we can in the bottom part, it says G minor 11. So you play the G minor 11 chord, and if you play or sing any of the notes represented via these squares, so we can see G is being colored, the note A is also being colored. If you play any of those notes, uh, in some musical sense, it should sound well. Now, when you change the chord, as we can see over here, it says E minor 11, then there are other notes, other squares that have been called that have been colored. So now other notes uh, sound well. 
under this specific chord. And what the app is doing is it registers the sound that you're making and it colors, as we can see over here, for this square that says two, it colors which note has been played. So that's a basic idea. You have chords, you have notes that have been colored, and you take as input the sound of the player or the user of the app, and you label, in this case, via painting some square as white, you you show which note are you playing or singing. And I say that this is a new hope because it does help you with just improvisation because now you have a way of looking at what notes sound good in a sense, uh, instead of just imagining. However, with this app, there are some caveats. Uh, it is that it's not free and also that it is not available for Android. Uh, I think this app was released like two years ago, but still there is no Android version. So, well, the solution that I did is, well, then I will just create my own app. Inspired, of course, by via this one over here that I just showed. Let, let me also share the link. Uh, so you can look at it. Let's see over here. So now what comes next is a shiny implementation of the type of app that I have just shown you. And over here I have a little demo. If you click in this element in the page, you can also access the link for the shiny app. I will again share the link if you want to use it. And if you you can see there are many changes. Let me hide this to start. For example, now I am labeling the notes, not in a column fashion, as in a row-wise fashion, because in a way it's more uh, uh, natural to understand the, the notes in this fashion because it's like a piano. You have some notes over here, then the next one, the next one, and such and such. And um, what is happening? Why is this with black square changing so much? It's because I am speaking and from the sound that comes out of my mouth, the microphone of my laptop is registering. Well, what note am I am saying as I am speaking? Uh, I had originally planned to, well, to take my guitar and play some notes so that you can see that right now. This page, well, this shiny app is detecting this, the note of the sound that I am making. However, I, I am not in my home right now, uh, so I, I I don't have my guitar. Uh, I can't sing, so I will not do it. But it's actually if you it, it does work. It it does it does detect the note that you sing. There is a, also a, a line in yellow in this black square that is getting created, and that's basically a way to to know how out of tune are you are. Uh, with that specific note. Are you matching the exact frequency of that note or are you a little bit off, a little bit under? If you're perfect, if you're matching the perfect, what's well, the exact frequency, well, the line should be in the, in the, in the half, sorry, in the middle, so like a half a split of the square. Uh, but that's basically how it works. It's like uh, the other row, but translated. Each row has one chord. As we can see, it says F major seven, the second row, another type of chord. And again, for each chord, some notes have been colored, those ones that sound good. Uh, again, in quotes. Um, if not, they probably don't sound as well. Again, in quotes. Because really, every note should sound well if you know how to phrase it in the musical context. Uh, I am going to play now this button. So you can see basically how it works. And let me first stop it. Okay, because there's always a little delay when, play up when I played it the first time. So now I will please play a and, and well, you can listen what happens. This first chord has its row. Uh, but, but wait, wait. 
Well, in that case, the second chord has its row over here, and the notes that sound well for that specific chord, uh, and such and such for every chord. And, and the main idea is that you have some chords, then you can change the scale that you want for that chord. And as you please, as you click play, then you will be able to perform a musical solo using those chords, those notes, and the the note that you sing or you play is getting registered in this. Uh, like table-ish thingy or here, as we can see for the square in black. So in that sense, uh, it is doing what the other app that I showed you in the beginning, it is doing. It, it is a kind of superset. It does have most of the capabilities of such app I have implemented in my own, using basic, basic front-end knowledge and, and shiny uh, knowledge as well. So, I wanted to show you a, a small breakdown of the app, uh, not just to share how it works, but because I also was hoping that this video, this opportunity uh, to, to present this app, is a chance for other people that see this video, or maybe you, uh, I don't know, I hope so, uh, to collaborate with, with this app because it's really an open source project. It's not paid like the other app. So really, if anyone wants to collaborate uh, with this project, uh, I hope that you do. Uh, so I'm going to describe the main functionality of this. I'm also showing the GitHub repository where is a code that enables such capabilities, uh, just to provide a guideline of the project in case anyone wants to collaborate in some specific aspect of it. So the first functionality comes in the form of web scrapping. So we want some songs to play. So I put web scrap chords, in particular for popular songs, but I have done it only for jazz, although I don't know if jazz songs is popular nowadays. Uh, it's okay. I, I, I will later on uh, dive a little bit more in, into these aspects. Over here, uh, yes, a general overview. Then a second step would be to homogenize a chord notation because one could write, for example, the chord C major seven in this fashion, C capital M seven, or perhaps major seven chords represented with this symbol over here, uh, or like an over here, like an upper, like, like, like a triangle, no, like an exponential, like an exponentiation symbol, as you can see over here for F major seven. Okay, so my F diet. Uh, there's also another bug. If you leave it open for quite a while, it dies. I don't know why. Then a, a third step it will, is to have a way to detect the note played by the user. For example, one could you do sorry do that using this JavaScript library called Meta.js. Uh, well, in this example, they are registering the the sound that is getting picked up by my microphone, and they are performing. I am not why I see like a proportion of the notes that compose my sorry that comprise my sound. Um, I am I don't really know what the, what it is doing, but at least we don't know that it is registering, registering the sound that I'm making. Uh, a third step would be to play a song selected by the user. Uh, in particular, I am doing that using this other library. It's called Estral JS, and it's basically a, like a language uh, for creating music. So over here, this is JavaScript code. However, uh, with this code, JavaScript code, we can create music. So I am going to please to click play, and we're going to hear some sound generated things to this code. So I am going to click play now. Loading some something. I have pretty bad connection right now, so it's probably taking a while. Um, okay. Okay, that's all right. I will share the link with you then. But as we can see, you can create ports, also specific notes. On such and such. 
and change instrument. It's really quite flexible. It's really, really good. And the fifth step would be to display a relationship between the selected song and the notes played. And that is what, what, what happened in the previous sub world. Instead of labeling the notes, they had numbers. Uh, and in a sense, uh, well, in, in the music, those are the degrees of the scale for each chord that you have selected. You have also selected a scale. And once you play a, a note, in, in that context, that is, you're playing a note where some chord is being played. In that musical context, each note has a certain degree of tension or resolution. So that's a kind of musical relationship that I'm talking about over here. Uh, and the last one, well, is being able to customize some music settings. In particular, maybe uh, having some list of chords and scales that the user can select from. Um, and to summarize uh, the app's main objectives, well, I think it would be these two. To facilitate the user's experience of creating a music solo, it really doesn't have to be only jazz. Uh, however, jazz is one of the genres where musical solos are pretty much expected to happen. So that, that's why uh, this app also has been focused in jazz, but really it can be any genre. Uh, and the other main objective is to show the user each note's tension evolution while the song plays. And, and again, I apologize for using musical terms. Uh, if it, it, it perhaps it, it is not uh, getting completely understood, um, uh, but that is mainly uh, a way for the user to have a, a rough guideline of what would sound good, what would sound bad. Again, I am quoting, uh, as you are playing some notes during your solo. So like having a, a visual roadmap of what to play, perhaps what not to play and such and such, instead of just uh, memorizing patterns, or leaks, as they are said in, in the musical context, uh, but to have a visual guide for what to play. Uh, so now I will describe the, the previous steps in a little bit more depth. So for web scrapping songs, well, the, the code, uh, again, this project has a public repository in GitHub, so really you can access the code. Uh, in, in this folder is where, where I have the code for this particular web scrapping. Uh, I mainly use the Python library beautiful soup. Uh, and the main database use has been this one over here, where they have, I think, like 100, no, for almost 450 songs. Uh, and as you can see, for example, I will click in this first song, it's called Anthropology the version via the musical artist R. Pepper. And from here, you can web scrap the chords that make up this song. They are over here. Then you can actually write, clean the, in this case, the text, right? So you have the particular chord, chord sorry. So these, these are separated by bars as well. And uh, well, the final result, Ah, so from web scrapping for, from that particular database is we have, well, a, a JSON file. So it is some particular song and song, also some artist version of it. And in a string, we have also encoded which are the quotes, sorry, the chords that comprise that song, but also separated by musical bars. So we can play the song quite accurately. Now, for the second step uh, is to homogenize a course notation because maybe you don't use only one database to extract ports from. Perhaps you use another database, and uh, maybe in that case, minor ports, as we can see over here, F sharp minor seven, they are not labeled via this line, but maybe with an uh, under with, uh, with an M. So again, we have some different notations. So we want the same notation for all the chords that we are going to show in the app. So if you web scrap from many databases, you would want uh, that the notation is homogeneous. So it's the same for all the chords. So really, yeah, that's just a matter of the relation. So as we see over here, 
itself, right? If you have some chord that it is being represented, sorry, if you have a minor chord that is being represented with this type of character, this line, well, let's change that to M for labeling minor chords. And again, that relation is only, you only have to create some JSON file that we have over here and specify uh, the notation and then which sort of vo musical voice you give one for that specific chord. And now that, now that you have this guide, this JSON file for how to translate the chord notation, well, the code for actually translating those chords uh, well, uh, I leave it over here. So you basically load the the final web scrapped course that I showed uh, a little earlier, and you 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 only translate it. You see it. We just in this JSON file. So in the end of this, I don't know. I think it's um, let's see over here. I, I, in the end, you translate it, and you have. Now, some JSON file of translated script, script code progressions. And then for detecting the node played by the user, there are really many options. In the beginning, I used this library called pitchy.js. In, in a way, I think it's better than the one I use now. Uh, it, the, the nodes did get more accurately uh, detected. Uh, however, Right now, I'm using this other library. So, sorry, this node detection module from the library ML, uh, ML5.ds. I think it's a library for machine learning. So, basically, you simply load the model for node detection and you use it right away. You don't have to create it. Uh, however, I know, wait, sorry, sorry. Um, and in the case of uh, importing the, the library for detecting nodes, it, it, it is justified embed ml5.js that I created over here. I think I copy paste it from another, from some YouTube, YouTube video. So we get the pitch and, and we store it somehow. And an important part of this is uh, these files that uh, define the way for detecting the node played by the user. It, it should be, they, they should be kept isolated so that if you want to replace a tool used for the node detection, then you can just change this file or perhaps not use this, not use this one, but use another file for uh, detecting the, the node played by the user. And I only change one file and have another way of uh, performing node detection. So if we keep things separate, like we have over here, it should be pretty easy to replace one model, sorry, one mo one way of detecting the node with another way of detecting the node. And in particular, I will try to use meta.js. It, it, has, it has more capabilities. It does, it does not only detect the node play, but as you saw, it also detects a, a sort of proportion of what is the most a, occurring pitch in the sound. Uh, that we're diagram pretty early on. Uh, and if, it's not necessary. Now, for the other step is to play the selected song. Uh, I do want to keep, yeah, again, for importing this library that allows us to play some song. I also have it in a pretty isolated file. So I only use this to activate, let's say, touch capability. And, and I, know also, I think I also copy paste this, this from another file. Uh, we are simply loading this, this and now have the capabilities of playing some ports. And another way to do it is using the JavaScript library called Don.js, um, but I prefer to add it. Uh, it's, it, I mean, it has more to offer. Uh, and, and now finally comes the part that Shiny actually becomes relevant. Even in the code, I have mostly non-existent code for the part of the server of the app. I think it's only, yeah, I mean, this is my whole server code. It's not even modularized, basically. 
like literally this is just sorry this is the whole server uh, the, the main code is just uh, javascript things uh, however this in this particular part about displaying relationship between selected song and notes played uh, this is where shiny comes most relevant and also a uh, knowledge about front end in particular uh, with this fact uh, let, let me come back to you Ah, it died. Okay, that's us. So I will explain it with the picture. Right? Uh, basically, this part over here, uh, as we saw, we, we were trying to, to recreate some aspects of the other app. So uh, they have columns of nodes. Now we create rows of nodes using Shiny. Uh, we can create HTML elements using Shiny, so we do that. And as we saw, they have also a way to label nodes with letters, as we can see in this image, C, D, E, F, and such. But we can also do that, a labeling of nodes via numbers, those in the case of musical degrees for a specific chord. And that's what we have for here. It says a five, six, seven, one, two, three, and such in this image to the right. And basically the code for doing that it's mainly shiny, shiny stuff and HTML and CSS. Uh, and this is a part where we can actually improve on the application that was later, sorry, earlier shown, the one from Melody Year, because really they are quite limited. I think they only have 50 or 100 songs. However, as we saw, if we simply web scrap, now we have like 450. And we can search perhaps another database and keep improving and improving. So in this case, I, I would really was just adding a staff in order to make that app a, not particularly better than Melody Year, but to have more to offer for a musician that simply wants to learn how, sorry, to experiment on creating musical solos. So we can do stuff like changing musical degree colors. So perhaps you relate some, something quite tense with the color red. So you can change the color of a specific cells. Well, in this case, it's not loading probably because where I am, where I am right now, I have that connection. Uh, but the code is over here if one wants to help in that. You can also toggle between musical notes or degrees. That is, you want to represent the notes via their name, like C, D, E, sorry, C, D, F, or perhaps via the degree, the musical degree, that is via numbers. And the go is over here. And another aspect that uh, I added to this application is saving the app's music settings. That is, you choose some scale and some chord, and you're practicing that for a long time. And, and you have customized the app so that if you later on want to open the page and recreate all, all of the settings that you have already uh, defined, then you, you don't want to do that manually. So you can save the settings of the app. And then we see over here, just upload the, the app settings file that you have saved. It's just a JSON file. Upload it, and then the app should recreate that, that specific instance that you created early on, earlier on. Uh, however, it still doesn't work. Uh, I think it's quite feasible to do using Shiny. They have things like bookmarks, something like that, like a, a embedding, sorry, a, a defining the a specific state of the app into a URL. So one could do something like that, for example. Uh, and then, for example, other capabilities. Mm. Ah, well, for selecting routes and, yeah, for selecting, uh, sorry, ports or a scale, yeah, some map, sorry, via some drop down token. Again, I will be showing you that. Ah, oh, wait, I can actually. Uh, I can run the app. Uh, let me do that because I am mentioning a, a lot of stuff, but not showing it to you. And I, I do want to. So uh, let's 
see, I want to go. I, I'm going to run it locally. So we can see that. Uh, yes. And yeah. Okay, so I, I am about to run I am about to run the app. It's also better because if you sorry, if you use the app directly via well via the URL that is on, online from the website where it has been stored on yeah, shinyapps.io. Uh, it's kind of laggy. So it's better if you run it locally. So let me just do this. Okay, so I, as I was saying, uh, over here, right, we have a, a toggle, sorry, a drop down for just songs to choose. We have all these songs. Let me choose, I don't know, Body and Soul, the version from Chewberry. And we can see the chords for, for that song have been updated over here. So I could press play. Ah, sorry, and they are also being displayed over here in these notes. The second chord is over here and such and such. Uh, if I play it, maybe, maybe some chords won't get recognized, but let's see. So really one can change this. I mean, this is a text area. So if you want, you can change the chord. So maybe not D, but E. And maybe not A, but C. And changing the chords. Over here, the, the rows have also been updated. And I played now on, on the different chord that I have now set will be played. Uh, this is just a struggle and uh, the, the library that I mentioned uh, for changing musical degree colors is what I had set up over here so as I was saying perhaps you will know perhaps you relate tension with the color uh, red so something like this flat five the, the degree of craft flat five it's quite tense so maybe you want the color to be red and now everything I'm sorry, everything that has a flat five, so we can see. Uh, but I mean, there is no flat five over here. And uh, let me change the, another color then. Uh, so three, musical degree three, maybe, I mean, it's quite relaxing. So maybe you think that we, it's as blue. Right now, this three, it's being colored as green. Sorry. Uh, green this as we can see over right here uh, but maybe i want it to be i don't know black no black no grayish so now the color has changed and we can see over here now it's gray. so really you can play around also with that changing color for degrees the other one was saving the app music settings we have over here a download app settings so I will download download some file. Um, let's see. Let oh, let's open it. It's a JSON file specifying which are the chords and the scales defined in the app. So now that it is being opened, it says, well, the roots of the scales represented as numbers. Also, what are the actual notes? of the scales, again, represented as an array of numbers. And also, well, what chords did you choose for that song? And they are also stored right here. It's a pretty long JSON, so I am not going to show everything. And then uh, we can see right here, you can upload it. Uh, it still doesn't work completely fine, so I am not going to do it. Uh, uh, and and the thing was single the thing over here. For example, I wait it like okay, I'm going to open it again. 
I know it didn't die. It was it was waiting for me to do something. So let's see. I select. I want to modify the first row of notes. There is this one over here that says F major seven and this. So maybe I want the root to be not C, just to be well. It should be F. So now the root is F. Is F. And now I want to play maybe perhaps another scale over this chord. Maybe the, I know, the Phrygian scale over this major chord. That would be pretty weird in a musical sense, but as we can see, I change the scale. So I press over here in another name, and the, the nose color has also changed. Um, perhaps now I want to select <clears throat> for this row another chord. Major nine, uh, and I, I haven't still implemented that, but it should change the part over here, the specific chord. So really, again, providing the user uh, capabilities for choosing a scale, choosing chords, choosing some song, and such and such. Uh, uh, well, this part I already mentioned that we can change the chord over here, uh, and, and it will be played. And it will also be updated, as we can see over here, in the first row. Okay, so that's basically it for what the app is able to do right now. So I, I, I just wanted to end with some future goals. Uh, for example, the new detection, it works fine. Really, the app as a whole, it, it is usable right now. It is good enough. However, uh, if you try to use it in mobile, it the, the no detection, I don't know why, but it, it never works, at least not for me. Uh, it also, despite of being a shiny app, um, we are using also this uh, shiny dashboard library to create it. And it's pretty easy to see that, oh, it's a usual way of using a shiny app, sorry, of creating a shiny app. And still, it really hasn't been uh, completely structured in the optimal fashion for a shiny app. So it would be better perhaps to structure the code into the form of a package. So something like they do in Golem. Uh, another thing would be that if you use this app via the URL that I shared, sometimes, sometimes it lags a little bit the node detection on, or maybe it also lags uh, when the code is played. So it would be better that every user can download an executable, executable file and they can run the app directly from the computer. Like we do, for example, when I know when you download RStudio, you download some X, sorry, some dot X file and then you run it and you have the, the app working for you. So one could do that uh, for this app. And there are ways to do it for R. There, I, there are some packages for doing that. But I haven't tried yet still. I think most of them require that you are using a package uh, structure. Another thing to, to work on would be to expand the number of songs in the database. Well, that is yes, that is yes, searching more databases and scrapping the chords and then translate it, translate the chord notation so that it is consistent for all of the chords in the app. And the same for expanding the number of scales and chords. That's pretty easy, actually. There are some uh, files that one can modify to do that pretty directly. Uh, let me just look it up. So for example, how do we give the user a, a choice for scales? It's over here. This scales or inter scales interval JSON. Uh, you define this and this. So perhaps you want another scale. So just write it over here uh, and the intervals that define such a scale. And then simply with the JSON file, uh, the toggle, sorry, the drop down that allow the user to choose a scale. Uh, that will be implemented now with the extra scales that you have defined. It's just a, a matter of updating, sorry, of expanding the JSON file over here. You can, you can also add the scales over here. And it's a, it's a similar thing for the chords. So however, 
I think I have finished the, ah, no, it works, it works. So major chords and you put something over there. Uh, again, the intervals are defined that such chords. So maybe, I don't know, dominant chords would be another object and you simply find some specific voicings of such chord type. So again, it's pretty easy, just update this JSON and the dropdown will be updated automatically when you run the app. Uh, now, so, so one quite interesting to be, sorry, to uh, interesting capability to add, to add on would be the use of AI. For example, this, there is this pretty interesting app from Google where you can uh, perform a musical duet with some artificial intelligence. Uh, it seems to be taking a while to load. So the main idea is you play something and then the program will play something back to you, but it is based on what you play. So I'm going to play something random like. I played the thing in blue and then the, the app played that in orange. So maybe something like that could be added to this application. Uh, now more things maybe like record the user, sorry, the notes play, but the user and then download that as a MIDI file. Another thing would be to perform an analysis of the of the solo play by the user because we have a record of it, so we can analyze it. Uh, and finally, perhaps, uh, let's see, ah, maybe something like the user input some MIDI file and this MIDI file is basically a, a solo, but uh, yeah, that represents basically a musical solo, so like only notes in this MIDI file. So, and then for the app to show such notes play, but uh, sorry, those notes play that have been stored in the MIDI file, but now display that in the, in this table each structure that we, that we saw in the app, these rows of notes. So basically, basically now we have this visual guideline that we have been, that we have been working on, but now not with a solo that the user creates, but with a solo that someone else has created. So now you can see, for example, how the tension is changing uh, as the user plays some node and then another one. Also how this specific player connected some node to another one. And I'm going to just say for having a, a visual feedback of some musical phenomenon, in this case of a musical solo. Uh, just to wrap up, uh, I reiterate the fact that now this is an open source project. Uh, we are trying to make the app better than the one I showed you in the beginning, the one from my lot here. So if anyone wants to collaborate, here is a link. Maybe you can share it with another person that you think uh, would be interested in helping this project. Uh, again, I will keep also improving the capabilities. So. Uh, still, every help is appreciated. Um, that's it, really. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, thank you for the opportunity also, uh, John, for, for me to share this with all of you right now and, and in, the, in the future video for YouTube. So that's really, thank you so much.